Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16 beta 2 has been out for a few days and has even more features in it that we've found since the initial what's new video. So I wanted to talk about all of those features as well as the overall experience of beta 2 versus beta 1, which we'll talk about toward the end of the video. Now the first new feature is under subscriptions. So if we go to settings, tap on your name at the top and then subscriptions, and you can see subscriptions looks completely different. This is available not only on iOS 16 beta 2, which it was live a few days ago, but now it's also available on iOS 15.5 where it looks completely different. So if I go into my Apple care, you'll see it looks a little bit different. So it's just a new interface that's been updated remotely for all of us. If we go into the lock screen, press and hold, create a new one, tap on photos. And if we select a portrait of someone, so this is Craig Federighi, now you'll see that we have some new filters. So we can zoom out here a little bit. And as we swipe through, we now have a new studio filter. This is something that's new and also has additional options. So you have perspective zoom, depth effects, low key and high key, which will change the background a little bit. You also have another effect for color backdrop. So you can go in, change the color, the background color can completely be changed and match whatever's in the photo itself. So that's something that's a little bit different with the color backdrop. Of course, we have duotone and color wash as well. Those are new filters. Now, additionally within wallpapers, if you're setting them from the wallpaper settings, go to customize, we'll customize the current wallpaper. We have different color options. And if we go into those color options, tap configure, we now have more color options than we did before. We used to have about two rows. Now we have three and sometimes more. So you have additional color options to choose from where you didn't before. Within beta two, the dictation sound is a little bit different for many people. Now I tried this back and forth with beta one. Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's not, but it's sort of a double beep sound. So we'll go into messages, tap on dictation and here, take a listen. So that's what it sounds like on many different phones. It's just a single dinging sound. I tried it again later and now it's making a single sound. Dictation is making a singular sound sometimes and other times it's making a double click sound. So maybe they'll change this a little later. If you're playing a song and you go to the music widget on your lock screen, if it shows properly where sometimes it doesn't, you can now scrub through the song's duration by pressing and holding on the widget. You can also do that with volume, but you weren't able to do it with the scrubber here for the song itself. Now, oftentimes this isn't even showing on the lock screen, but if it is, it should be interactive. Now, when you take a screenshot, tap on the screenshot, then go to share it. You now have the option to add to quick note that wasn't there before. Also, when you go into your photos app, tap on a photo, share the photo. If you tap on options at the top, you now have the option for automatic individual photo or iCloud link. These weren't here before, and you can finally send an iCloud link on any photo. So it's really great to have those options. If you have to press on a photo that uses visual lookup, you may have some additional options. Now I was not able to get this to show, but I did see other that had the option where it would show that they could actually look up the subject within the photo. So this is one world trade center. I've shown this before and the Oculus, sometimes it will recognize it just within the album and then allow you to look up what it is directly from here. I wasn't able to reproduce that, but others are seeing that. Now, if you have AirPods connected to your phone, maybe they're AirPods Max or something else, when they're connected, if you go into your control center, tap on the AirPlay icon, you'll now see that the AirPods are below the phone before they were above it. So this is a little change that makes more sense. Also recently found with the latest AirPods Max beta update, and I did a video about the beta update to the headphones recently, there's actually improved Bluetooth sound. So what that means is there's new codecs that are higher quality where the sound will be much higher quality in the future. So this is great. We've wanted this for a while, maybe more lossless audio going over Bluetooth. So hopefully we see that very soon under a keyboard. There's some new options. So if we go to general and then our keyboard, and then if we go to keyboards and if we add the Kazakh keyboard, there's new options. So you'll see there's a little arrow here and we have options. On the previous version, there were no options. So you can see the keyboard on beta one, there's no options. Now we have Kazakh, Russian or Russian QWERTY keyboards. So those are available 
if you have beta 2. Again, within settings, if we go to accessibility, under accessibility, you'll see that we have the new option for live caption beta. Under live caption beta, it now says at the bottom that live captions uses additional battery. This is a small update, but it's actually telling you that it will reduce your battery life overall when you're using that as it drains the power more or uses more of the processor. When you go into Safari, if you're on the main page, it will now say start page at the top. A little change, but this carries across all the betas this time. If you go into the home app, there's some new options here also that I found. Now, some of these have to do with beta one, but they're not obvious. So if you press and hold, maybe you want to change this and edit your home view, tap and hold and edit your home view. Now tap on any of these icons and you'll have the option to resize them. So you'll see I can resize the HomePod one and it's easy to resize. It's just not obvious that you can do that until you accidentally tap on it. Within the Home app, if you're using HomePod beta updates, you'll also have a new software update dialog. Tap the three dots in the upper right, go to your home settings. Within home settings, scroll down, you'll have software update. Tap on software update, it will check for your updates and you also have updated recently. Tap on that and you'll see your different HomePods here. So you'll see there's one on the iOS or HomePod OS 16 version, and you can see your recent updates. This is just a new dialogue and some of them even have switches if you have a bunch of them in order to update or not update them. Additionally, within the home app, if you're using a garage door opener within the home app, the garage door opener icon or glyph has actually been updated. So there's small changes throughout for that on your lock screen or notifications. If you set the weather above time, it actually looks a little bit different now where if you have a warning or maybe a chance of rain, it will show that I was able to screen capture that the other day. And you'll see here, it says chance of light rain and it sort of cuts off and it doesn't look particularly great, but hopefully it will scroll eventually in the future and give more information. But so far it will show this as well as different warnings as well. Within the weather app itself, the precipitation data looks a little bit different also. So if we go into a day where there's precipitation, switch to precipitation, there's more information and it looks a little bit different. It gives more information based on that and it's just a slight redesign. The other day I noticed as well with beta two, when I was in the car, I activated Siri using Hey in front of it and it gave me this icon. Now I don't have any car mode set or anything, but using Siri showed a little car on the screen, knowing that I was moving and sort of blocked the screen and just gave me the little Siri icon at the bottom. So this is a new update in beta two. In iOS 16, of course we can edit a message. Many of you know this already, but one thing they've done, which is really nice is if you do edit this message and maybe we just add an exclamation point here, the person on the other end, if they're not using iOS 16 betas or iOS 16, it will actually send an additional message saying that it's edited. So it will show the original message and then a new one that's edited as a follow-up message. That's something they added with beta two. Also within messages, there's a new video showing new faces for Memoji. So this is something Steve Mosier found and thanks again to him for all of his help, helping me find some of these new changes, but you can see the animation has changed or the little intro video. So there's new Memoji within iOS 16. And that's just a little video they show from time to time explaining what you can do with it. Now I showed in a different video where notifications have some new options. If you go to notifications, you can display them as a stack as a count or a list. If we change the count, go to our notifications. Sometimes these update properly. It looks like it's not working hundred percent, but some are actually seeing it update as a count. So you can see them stack. I've had it stacked for a little while and it seems to work most of the time. Other times it doesn't, but someone on Twitter found this and you can see what it looks like when it stacks them and then gives you sort of a count below that. So it's a little different as well. Also in notifications, if you're in sleep mode, they're now faded. So if we turn on sleep mode here, turn on sleep, I'll turn on sleep on beta one, you'll see notifications on the lock screen are faded on beta two. So it kind of keeps them in the background so that they don't disturb you and aren't overly bright within notes. You'll see, we have some text and when you select any text in iOS 16 beta two, you can scroll through that selection. You no longer have to tap on the arrow to scroll through also within beta two tap on some text, select it. And now if we scroll through, you'll see, we have a new option for find selection, tap on find selection, and it selects all of the different words that match. So you'll see above the keyboard, it says text, and there's one of four. 
You can change this maybe to the word note and it will find any of those as well. So it's a much nicer way to find text within a document or anywhere else within the tips app. And this is one you probably don't go into a whole lot. If you go under the be prepared section on beta two, there's now a new section for in case of emergency tap on this and it gives you more information about it, explaining your medical ID and more. So something new that they've added. And this has become a very useful app with a lot of different great tips. The Apple watch tips will appear also if you have an Apple watch connected on iPad OS 16 beta two, there's some additional changes with stage manager. So if I go into maybe stage manager, you'll see it's turned on. And when you have a keyboard connected, if you press and hold on the command key, so maybe we'll go into a different stage, press and hold. And sometimes it will show you the keyboard shortcuts for stage manager. However, it's not showing Showing for me now I've tried to reboot this and it's just not showing also additionally when plugged into a, a different monitor sometimes it will show another option at the top for a new window option that says it will be added later there's also additional display support for ultra wide monitors so some people have been using this with ultra wide and it seems to be working on up to 32 by 10 ultra wide monitors within settings under settings and accessibility, there's also a new option for hover text. Hover text has been brought to iPad. This is something people have wanted for a long time for accessibility. And now it's available with iPad OS 16 beta two on Apple watch. There's actually a change that I didn't mention in the what's new video. And if we go to workouts, go down to workouts here and scroll down, you'll now see the option for multi-sport workout. So you can do a triathlon and it has that included where Apple talked about that in the keynote, it's now available and you'll see it actually disables the pressing of the screen since you actually are doing something within the water and then maybe biking or something else. So you have to end it that way and get out of it, but that's available now for multi-sport. If you want to use that on your watch. Now, as far as the overall experience of iOS 16 beta two, it's got better performance and better battery life than beta one. The overall performance seems to be much, much better. Just using it day to day from the day it came out till now, it feels much better. It's faster, more responsive. And whether that be on older devices, now this has beta one, sometimes it's just really buggy on beta one. They've fixed most of those issues with beta two. So that that's great to see. And as far as battery life, it's not really that good, but it seems to be a little bit better for me. If we go down to our battery battery health, you'll see I'm still at 100%. And here's my coconut battery stats that I share usually every week showing my charge cycles. And then here's the overall battery life. So if we go back into battery, You'll see over the last 24 hours, it's changed a little bit and it has deleted everything else for some reason. So this is something it reset and it's a little bit of a bug. So you'll see it says three hours and 29 minutes of screen on time, 44 minutes of screen off time. Typically battery will get me through a day, but I'm still down to 30 to 40% before I'd be to about 20 to 30%. So it's getting better, but it's still not great yet. And then also some banking apps are still not working. So if you're having maybe some issues with that. I've heard from some of you that they don't work. Other apps do work. My banks actually work fine on here. Some don't, I'm not sure what specific banks, but there's so many around the world that you'd actually have to try it out. So if you're wondering if you should try it based off of that, you probably shouldn't. Also Apple music still skips songs sometimes when people are playing the music and occasionally it doesn't show up on the lock screen. There's a lot of little odd issues here and there. And sometimes there's lag on older devices on newer devices, but overall the performance is better. Now, as far as when to expect the public beta, Apple said it will be available in July. So that means pretty soon, maybe within a week or so, another week and a half or so, we'll see the public beta and then we'll see beta three. Usually we're on a two week cycle and we should see that within a couple of weeks where we'll have beta three, maybe around the week of July 4th. So that is a holiday in the United States independence day. So we could see it that week or maybe even the following week, but either way, the public beta is only a couple weeks away at this point, based on what we've had in the past, along with beta three, we should see that. And then of course, iOS 15.6, many people are wondering where that is. Beta four was released for Mac OS, the Mac OS equivalent version of 12.5 beta four was released on Friday, which is a bit odd and they didn't release the iOS update. So I would expect early next week to have iOS 15.6 beta four with a release candidate, either possibly that week or the following week and a final release in mid July. At this point, I thought it would be early July, but based on what they're doing now, I think it'll be mid July.
Now, as far as the YouTube community poll, I did run one of those and wanted to go over a few of your comments to see what you had to say. Tom Davis says much better performance here on beta 2 13 pro animations are really smooth and act as they should. I haven't had any crashes or needed to hard reset. All of my daily apps work great, except for my continuous glucose monitoring app. No biggie though. It never worked well. Anyway, I have a a separate reader for it. Can't believe this is a beta. For me, the big improvements are the health app. The sleep and medication features are a wonder. I just recently updated to iOS 16.2 or beta 2, and it's running smoothly on my iPhone 11. Victor Sai said iOS 16 beta 2 on iPhone 12 Pro. Apple Music keeps crashing when you click something the first few seconds after playing lossless music. Timer don't show up on the lock screen anymore. Other than these, it's okay. Brady Hoffman said it was buggy on my iPhone 10s Max. I went back to 15.5. Dr. Kushik said running iOS 16 beta 2 on an iPhone 13, it heats up much less and thus battery life has improved, but not as iOS 15.5 to 15.6 beta level. It may be just 10 to 15% lesser screen on time compared to those versions. Overall, not as bad as beta 2. And so with all of those comments, that leads me to should you install iOS 16 beta 2? And at this point, I would wait for the public beta. We're probably only a couple weeks away, and that is when it typically gets it's much more stable and so far it's been pretty good, but I think it's going to get much better. So probably in just a couple of weeks, we'll have the public beta or maybe a week and a half or so we'll have the public beta and then we'll move on to beta three and so on until a final release in September. And so lots of big changes and features throughout all of iOS 16, Apple continually makes a bunch of little other icon changes I haven't mentioned as well, but if there's anything else you've found that's major, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.